All right, what's up guys? It is episode D of Visual KABC. Right when I was about to record this thing, my beautiful, brilliant white light just went out as I was setting up. Perfect timing. I am a little tired, but I'm going to get this video done tonight because I will literally never get it done. And I keep putting it aside and waiting for a nice warm day. It is so cold and I hate the East Coast so much. All right, so let's get started. Two bands I'm gonna be reviewing today are Dean Leem and Dallas Mary. So what made me decide to review Dodi Mati is their aesthetics. There's two particular PVs that I was very fond of back when I was younger, but I can't even tell you for the life of me what's going on in those PVs, but I can tell you that I remembered them vividly. <laughs> They were painfully, painfully low quality, but aesthetically I always kind of found the concept of each member having their own individual colors pretty interesting. I never took the time to properly review them, so I was like, hey man, why not now? You know, I'm 25, let's do this, quarantine. Dollis Mary was around from 2005 to 2007, so even though I was seeing pictures of them like all over the place, they were already broken up by the time I kind of sort of discovered them. They started off with five members and then two of the band members left later. The vocalist's name was Seiju, they had two good guitar players. First one's name was Karen, the second one's name was Yori. They had Rinka on bass and they had Shinya on drums and I remember their names because I think I heard a little bit about their departure from the band. I feel like Dodi Mati wasn't around long enough for me to get into the reasons why they left compared to other bands where I might kind of go into it. But yeah, those are the band members, man. Yori was also in charge of a lot of like the piano work for a lot of the songs so I thought that was pretty cool. I reviewed two albums but they were so close together. I listened to the older one first and then the first album last. It was so funny because I, I remember thinking, wow, they've improved and I was wrong. <laughs> so yeah, two albums came out the same exact year, a few months apart. I guess we're gonna start in the order that I listened to them. I'm gonna put the dates on the screen anyways. Pretty much going right into the album, I liked it immediately. It was the intro and then there was a second song called Confine. <laughs> I just love the dramatic pauses in the song, the piano piece that plays like throughout the song and then at the very end. And also I felt like the chorus and the instrumentals were pretty strong like right off the bat. I was like, okay, Dodi Mati. I didn't know much about you before except for like cages and dolls and crotch touching, but they really got me within the second song. I was pretty much excited to listen to the rest of it. I'm gonna have to read this right off my notes here. The 11th track on the album, it's called Tagatame ni Saku Inochi. I can't really gauge how I feel about Seiju's voice. I am super distracted by the instrumentals when I do listen to their more symphonic music. I would say Seiju's voice is decent. More importantly, it matches with the music very well. In the album, there's a lot of switching between dark tones and uplifting tones. I believe music correlates to energy and there's a lot of like dark energy and then light energy in their music. I think it's a really good balance. All right, now getting to Dodi Mati Party. Like, what? what is this? Is this even the same band? <laughs> When listening to Dori Mari Party, I actually thought Seiju's voice had improved. Obviously that made no sense because that album came before, so it was my pure imagination. I think when it comes to the chorus of songs, this band is pretty strong. Even if I tend not to like the verses as much, when the chorus comes in, I usually like it. <laughs> This 
album was very playful and very funky. There's a lot of showing off with the guitar especially and it's just very bouncy and made me feel happy. There's a song called Funky Night Honey and it's the fourth track. It's a pretty good overall feel for the entire album. It's very playful, it's very cute. <laughs> I couldn't even come to a concise decision if I liked the album a lot because it just seemed like one huge parody. It was catchy, it made me smile. There's so many songs that I didn't like, but the songs that I did like stood out enough for me to mostly have good things to say about the album. It was enjoyable. So all right, let's discuss the likes and the dislikes. On one hand, I feel like it's cheating because symphonic rock with a good chorus, I'm already sold. It was a pleasant surprise because you know I didn't expect it. I was only going off the two PVs I saw as a kid. With a lot of albums that I listen to, it always feels super continuous and sometimes monotonous. With these two albums, it was super easy to listen to all the songs and not feel like my ears were congested and I've been listening to the same thing for too long. All of their songs were different enough for me to not have to turn it off and take a break. Both seemed like one big experiment where they were trying to find what they wanted to do and surprisingly I was here for that. Even the songs that I didn't like weren't that bad because there would always come a song that I did really like. That can count as a positive thing, right? I didn't really have any dislikes for this band. One thing I did want to note is when they came out with Doni Mari Party, which was their very first album, they weren't really under a label that I could find. That would probably explain the big transition to like symphonic rock that came out of nowhere. And they were good at it. They weren't bad at it when they did did sign the Kami Joe's label? Was it like, hey, you guys should try playing this to see if you can increase your popularity? I don't know. They did a decent job of both albums, so I think it's pretty impressive to be able to do two different sounds but still be pretty good at them. I feel like overall, there are no dislikes with Doni Mani. I enjoyed listening to their albums and I'll still continue to listen to some of their songs. <laughs> All right, I took a short break and now I'm ready to talk about Deem Lean. Originally, Diora was in Deem Lean's place, but after listening to Deem Lean's album, I was like, I guess I could just explore Diora in my own time. Prior to Miscellaneous, I had seen their video Departure and I definitely could tell that they were interesting when I watched Departure, but there still wasn't enough consistency in the music to like pull me into it. So I will only be discussing Miscellaneous. That's the album that kind of made me want to make this review. I do kind of want to talk about the other members that left last year. Right now in Deem Leap, there's only three members. There is Sho on vocals, there's Hiroshi on drums. If I'm not mistaken, he was support first, but he turned into a member. And then there's Retsu on guitar. There was Ria and Taishi, they both left. I don't really remember which ones left for what reason, but I do remember it was for physical health reasons, mental health reasons, or a mixture of both things. I read both Ruya and Taishi's letters to fans and I'm assuming it's way more personal just in general with the relationship between the fans and the band members. Cause you know here, you know, the bands, if somebody was leaving, they'd be like, peace, like no reason, no rhyme. You're just gonna have to figure out why. It does kind of suck, but it's also just like, who are you to tell somebody that they can't leave? There were two members that left in 2017. They had a bassist named Tsubasa and a drummer named Issei. With Tsubasa, he didn't really give a clear reason, which which is fine. Like I said, I'm totally fine with that. I think with Issei, it was some very, very weird stuff going on. He had like an altercation with like a fan, allegedly. And I guess he said he left because of his abilities and tension with other band members. This is where we kind of get into the territory of why I feel like band members should really keep their reasons for leaving personal. It's just a really great area when it comes to like mental health and and things going on within the band. I feel like some things should be kind of kept private. 
All right, so let's start the review. Miscellaneous came out this year. If I'm not mistaken, it came out in January. All these songs are available to listen to on Spotify, so I'm not going to be putting clips of songs in this video. I guess I should probably start off with What's Up. The PV is actually what made me want to go and listen to Dean Lieb's album. I was very, very impressed by show, his vocals, the composition of the music. I was kind of shook, like, this is Dean Lieb? Is this the same Dean Lieb from De Departure? Like, what? You know, because it's super fast. I was very surprised that they had already kind of toned down their look and changed their music that drastically. One of the things I like about the song What's Up and a lot of the album in general is a lot of the guitar work. Not only do I wonder how something like that would transfer live, but I also kind of wonder how show's vocals would transfer and if it would sound good. There's another song that I really like called Take Me Out in Midnight. I think that song is really well done. And I think Take Me Out in Midnight showcases shows vocals very, very well in particular. Sometimes I get a little weird about voices that kind of shake, but he does it in a way where it's still palatable to the ear. And the vocal overlays in that song are used very, very well. Now this kind of leans more towards the dislikes area. I feel like with this type of sound you can definitely overkill. Generally throughout the album it's done very well but some songs it's just like some things didn't really need to be there. In the song Before It's Too Late I felt like some parts of it were unnecessary. I could have done without the mixing effects in that song in particular but you know it didn't make it bad it just kind of made it not as good. I liked a lot of the album but overall I feel like What's Up and Take Me Out in Midnight were my two favorite songs. Right when I first started and listening to it, it reminded me of Lean Toste Sigure a lot. The musical elements and all the experimental sounds, if you took out Sho's voice, I would imagine TK's voice. Added to that kind of Lean Toste Sigure sound, there were some sporadic elements, as well as some songs that just came out of nowhere. A lot of the interludes were completely different than a lot of the sounds on the album. I will say the consistency with this album is a lot better musically than a lot of the other stuff that I've listened to from Dean Lim's older work. I didn't want to just give a bad review solely because it's not my type of music. So I guess the best way to explain how I feel as far as improvements about Dean Lim, I definitely feel like their music has way more consistency than it used to have, whether it's a sound I like or not. As an entire album, the music is a lot stronger than one individual song. Even some songs that kind of come out of the blue, everything still complements each other very well. Everything goes by super fast too. I feel like the album, it always goes by so fast. Before I even started writing the review for the album, I actually had to listen to it quite a few times. I still really like the album. I just think that the direction that Dean Lim is going in is a direction that I really, really like. I'll continue to support them. You know, I became a fan so I can poke around a little bit. I think a lot of people were super disappointed about this album, especially a lot of the older Dean Lim fans. I do understand understand, but I don't think this was a bad album. Even if you take away the Visual K aspect, it's a pretty legit album. That is my overall opinion. These two bands were really, really cool. Even though it's taking me a long time to come out with like videos and stuff, I am having a lot of fun with this. The second half of this video was a little different. I wasn't able to include the music, but it just came out, you know, 2020. So if you guys are interested in checking out Demon Name's album, I highly suggest it. It would be kind of nice to see more Visual K bands go in that type of direction because for me I think it was a very unique sound for a visual K band in their position. It'll be really interesting to see what stuff they come up with next but I am about to go to sleep. Tomorrow I will start listening to the other bands that I'm supposed to be listening to. Uh, let me see, I don't even, I can't even remember. Like I can't even think straight. It is 3.42 AM. You guys enjoy your quarantine as much as you can. I know I've been binge watching live concerts of like literally every band. So it's been very, very fun. All right guys, peace out. No.